This is the latest model from Wilbur to carry the Welsh Dragon onto the motor industry scene. To overcome a major item in car buying, enthusiasts have in the past avoided purchase tax by buying their cars in component form and assembling them themselves. Gilburn had made it their business to supply this do-it-yourself car market. Why then have they now decided to abandon this policy in favour of producing tax-paid complete cars? Michael Leather, Gilburn's managing director, explains. It's, it's early days yet with the Mark III to know exactly how this is going to affect us, but it certainly is a very big change. And of course, it's a change that we felt is appropriate to make at this time because, as you know, value-added tax is coming in early next year. We didn't want to be in a position where we were having to change over the taxpayer cars with a model which people had got used to buying in component form. So that I felt that now with a new model was an appropriate time to change. You've uh, used two terms there, perhaps, which need explaining, certainly to me uh, being a layman in these things. Taxpayer car and um, value added tax. I suspect, like many people, I, you know, I really don't know yet what this is about. Have you worked out what it would have meant in terms of cash? In terms of the, the retail value of the car, the retail value of the car when value added tax comes in in April next year will be slightly lower than the tax paid car now. But the main point is that it will effectively mean the end of component cars. It's been made clear to us in correspondence that the kit car market will effectively cease next year. So that we're talking about our customers having to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of an additional 500 pounds for the same car this time next year. The company had started in 1959, when the original owners, Giles Smith and Bernard Fries, put their names and wits together to produce the first Gilbin. From these first experiments with fiberglass bodybuilding in rooms above a Fantwit Vardre butcher shop, their success grew. After attracting the interest of various investors, the company changed hands a number of times until it eventually became the property of Michael Leather. This year, he enlisted the help of the management consultant, Roger Solway, who was a Gilbert enthusiast, convinced that the car would find a ready market in Europe. He is now Michael Leather's co-director. Producing only five cars a week, how do they survive in an industry where in Britain alone, many larger companies have had to combine or been swallowed up by giant corporations? We survive on specialization. We survive on maintaining a level of quality that the big boys can't afford to maintain. We can put in the things that are different and which the, 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 the discriminating buyer who is a Lamborghini uh, is willing to pay the premium for. Where do you sell them? Many in Wales? We sell uh, right across the whole spectrum, but our, our major spectrum is in the, the sort of professionals in, in this country. We do sell a lot in Wales. We're making a big effort just now to expand our distrib distributor cover in Wales. Um, but it is uh, no longer just a car for Wales, it's a car from Britain for those people who want a quality car and are willing to pay the price for it. You've been here, I believe, a relatively short time. How do you see the future? Is it a future of expansion in Wales or will the greater market see you being tempted out towards the golden triangle of the Would European you like community? Some no, we see very much a future here in Wales. Um, the, the, the spirit of working here, the quality which we get with the people who are working with us here is much better than we find anywhere else and I've worked with many companies throughout Europe. Um, we see the expansion into Europe coming from here in Wales. Michael Leather is not willing to talk of the company's present financial situation, but what is clear, however, is that they have been self-financed and operating at a profit. But to face the crucial transition to tax-paid cars and entry into Europe, they have now enlisted the help of merchant banks. What hope does Europe hold for this new venture? Very promising, I believe. It's early stages yet, but during the last 12 months, we've had a lot of inquiries from the European market. And the first definite result of this is that we've signed an agreement with a Dutch company which would appear to be going to bring us between 100 and 150 cars over the next two years. This is a definite commitment. Now we've had other negotiations in Germany, which are reaching a fairly final stage. We've also had two other fairly firm inquiries. So it looks pretty good at this stage. You mentioned that you are going into Europe because you had a number of inquiries from there. Have you, in fact, done any sort of market research to establish 
how many of the sort of people you're looking for there are there? Yes, we have. We've done some market research, particularly in Holland, and particularly with this company that we signed the agreement with. And it does tend to indicate that the market is very much the same as it is in this country. The professional man, as you say, the doctor, the dentist, the architect, the lawyer, and very much the same age bracket as well. What age bracket is that? I would say between 30 and 45, mainly. Now, for the British market, you seem to need to produce about one card a day, that's yes. five to yes. six a week. What's this going to mean in the European market in terms of expansion at this stage? It's going to mean um, some fairly radical factory expansion. At the moment, we're limited, of course, by the number of moulds we have. We only have one mould, so that limits us to five cars a week. We are in the process of making another mould, and indeed, after that, a third mould. I hope that by midway through next year, we should be in a position to make up to 15 cars in a week. So this should certainly take care of the expanding market, both in this country and in Europe. The publicity sheet for the Mark III reads, the quality stems from the traditional Welsh craftsmen who hand build each car to a high standard of finish. Is this just a throwaway compliment, or is Michael Leather satisfied that he would want to meet any future expansion by staying in Wales? Sounds good in publicity, but certainly not entirely a throwaway compliment. Um, we have a number of people here who've been here since the company started, and they've built up skills and knowledge which are completely invaluable. And with regard to labour that we've acquired since then, we certainly find people in this area very adaptable, very willing and able to pick up the skills required. Not a throwaway compliment at all. We're, we're, we're very proud of the labour here and we find it suits the car well and produces a very good car. Is it also true that availability of labour in Wales is an attractive feature? Labour is fairly easily available, yes, but not um, necessarily in the particular skills immediately that we require. So there is a training period in each case. So we can get labour, um, and we then have to spend or oh, anything between four and twelve weeks training it up in the particular skills. Are the workers here aware that they are producing cars just like the people at Dagenham's or wherever are, and perhaps feel that they're badly done by it because they're you know far removed from their country? I think the workers here are well aware of what's going on in other parts of the country, but no doubt about that. Um, I believe that we pay a competitive race for this area, and that's the important thing. Excuse me, Mr. Lambert. Yeah. Give him a quick word. If you were doing this particular job in Coventry, how much more do you think you'd be earning? Well, twice as much as I am now, right? Are you happy, though, with that sort of situation? Uh, in this area, you have to be. If I want a lot of money, well, I've got more, haven't I? What is the union organisation like? Uh, about 50% of the market. Is this a growing situation or is it just a It is a growing situation, yeah. Are you an active union member? Uh, an union member, not active. Why is that? Uh, well, there's no strength. Uh, is it because that, uh, you hold a certain position in the factory? Well, partly, yes. Uh, the words of the old song, perhaps, I've got the foreman's job at last. Is that uh, No, no, not exactly, no. Being brought up in this area, one doesn't change that much. Not all the workers at Gilburn share this attitude towards unions, however. Dissatisfaction recently led to some employees approaching the management to try to secure wage increases. We did for a few years and then we go to, um, you know, for deputations and win one from each shop. Uh, as I say, I'm more active member, I tried to be a member for years. But, uh, um, we tried to do our best, you know, for the shop. We went in for a raise not so long ago, but uh, uh, they insisted on bonus rises, which are not good to us at the moment. And uh, we insisted that we wanted it on the flat rate. We, How do you... we eventually got a firm not on the name, so. How do you think you compare with your colleagues in the car industry in the big conurbation? Oh, we, are, we are very poorly paid. We have you know, with regard to Ford and Jaguars and this, we are very poorly paid. Well, they just made an agreement now, I think, for £44 a week, and then for £35 We were for 40, 
body or weak for just over 20 pounds. I notice, uh, walking about the plant here, there are a number of young people working here. Oh, no, How do they feel about it? Well, if you look over wood with one of them, uh, sit up. No, 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 no. Yes, uh, no, sit up. Uh, you're fairly young, obviously. Yes. Uh, How do you feel about the situation here as regards conditions of salary and that sort of thing? Well, um, of course, you all want more money over again, uh, but of course, there's no money in the kitty. Uh, cannot free of it. Is it your ambition to own a Gilbert? Well, yeah, obviously. No, if they give me one, they'll have one. They, uh, if they don't think they'll buy one. Do you think you'll ever earn enough money here to be a Gilbert owner? I don't know, I told you. I'm going to get no.